Whether you're taking IELTS Academic, IELTS General, the computer-delivered IELTS, or the paper-based IELTS test, the speaking section is the same for everybody. Do you know what happens leading up to the speaking test, during the speaking test, and after the speaking test? That's what we're going to find out in this lesson. Now, I've taken the IELTS test five times for research purposes because I think every IELTS teacher should have taken the IELTS test, don't you? Now, leading up to the test, I got a little bit nervous. This is very normal. Let's talk about that. Before your speaking test. Okay, so I've got a few things to tell you about leading up to your speaking test so you can calm your nerves. First, you will be given a day and a time for your speaking test. Your speaking test will usually come after the other parts of the test. So make sure you give yourself plenty of time to get to the testing center. Make sure you bring your ID. Maybe it's your passport. And finally, an examiner will come to collect you. Okay, just a little tip here. When the examiner comes and gets you and you're walking together to the speaking test room, don't suck up to them. Be very friendly, but don't try to make small talk at this stage. You can't impress the examiner here. What you want to do is impress the examiner in the actual test. Certainly respond to them if they ask you any questions, but as I said, no small talk here. Okay, let's imagine now you're in the speaking test room during your speaking test. At this point, when you're sitting down, the examiner will ask to see your passport and confirm some details with you. Then part one of the speaking test will begin with some pretty straightforward questions that you can think of as small talk. Do you live in an apartment or a house? Are you a student or do you work? Part one of IELTS speaking will always start with these questions. Then the questions will suddenly change direction and the examiner will say, let's talk about art, or let's talk about the rain, or let's talk about computers, or let's talk about any of these topics here. And then the examiner will ask you some pretty straightforward questions about one of those topics where you need to give your personal views and opinion. Now, if you want to learn all the best strategies for IELTS speaking and how to maximize your scores, then you need to watch the Methods video lessons on E2 Test Prep, where an ex-IELTS examiner will take you through exactly how to tackle each of these questions. This is a great way to boost your scores and overcome your nervousness. Okay, so after the small talk, part one, you will then do part two, two minute talk. After the small talk, the examiner will then hand you a piece of paper and a pen and give you a task card that looks like this. The task card will include a prompt, three dot points, and an additional sentence. You will have one minute to prepare to speak about the particular topic you are given. There are four main topic categories that you might have to speak about in IELTS Speaking Part 2. They include people, places, objects, or events. So out of those four large categories, you'll have to talk about a specific thing, a specific topic, such as a friend, a library, a gift, or a wedding. Or the task card you're given might ask you to speak on any of these topics. So after you've done your two minute amazing talk, the examiner might give you a couple of follow up questions. And after that, you're finished with part two. So you'll move on to part three, deep discussion. So in this part of the test, part three, you're going to have a dialogue with the examiner, a back and forth conversation. And the questions that the examiner will ask you will carry on from the task card that you looked at in part two. So for example, if you were asked about an advertisement in your task card, you will now talk to the examiner more broadly about advertising. Or if in your task card you talked about a teacher, you will now talk more broadly about education. 
And this is where it gets a little bit more abstract. You might need to define something or explain something or argue for something, list something, classify something, compare and contrast something or describe something. For example, the examiner might ask you, what is an advertisement? Why do you think advertising works? Do you think TV ads or internet ads are more effective? What types of advertisements are there? Are logos on clothes, such as a t-shirt, a form of advertising? How has advertising changed in the last few decades? What makes an effective advertisement? It's worth pointing out that in part three, you're not giving answers. There's no incorrect or correct answers. You're being graded on your language skills. So as soon as you finish part three, the examiner is actually going to give you your score. Let's talk about that in more detail. Scoring. IELTS speaking is not scored arbitrarily. That is, there is a certain way that IELTS examiners mark you and it's based on seven key factors. Fluency, coherence, vocabulary range, vocabulary precision, grammatical range, grammatical accuracy, and pronunciation. Number one, fluency. This means that you speak with little or no hesitation and very few ums or ahs. The words and the rules come to you effortlessly. And also, you speak at a moderate pace. Not too fast, not too slow. Number two, coherence. Coherence means that your phrases and your sentences or your ideas flow logically from one to the next. Number three, vocabulary range. Vocab range means that you have a broad repertoire of words that you can use to express yourself clearly. Number four, vocabulary precision. So vocabulary precision is word choice. That is, you're using the right word at the right time to make the right meaning. You might use a fancy word here or there if it works, but you are not using fancy words that don't work. Always focus on clarity. Number five, grammatical range. Grammatical range means that you use a variety of different sentence types. So for example, some simple, some compound, some complex, some compound complex, maybe a question, maybe an if sentence, etc. Number six, grammatical accuracy. Grammatical accuracy means that you get your verb tenses right, your prepositions. If you're creating a question or a negative sentence, you get that right as well. All of the little bits and pieces of grammar. Number seven, pronunciation. Pronunciation means that you can make all of the 44 individual sounds of English, the p, m, d, etc., as well as all the combined sounds, so the consonant clusters like spr and sm and sl, for example. If you want to improve your pronunciation for your IELTS test, if you do sign up to E2 Test Prep, you can click this button here, which will take you across and give you a free account in E2 English where there's a great pronunciation improvement course. Okay, so I've given you a nice broad overview of what happens leading up to, during and after your speaking test in the IELTS. Now, the best thing you can do is learn the methods lessons. These are strategies or approaches to the different parts of the speaking test. You can find those videos on E2 Test Prep. You can click the link in the description below. Cool, keep practicing. I'm sure you'll get a great score. My name is Jay, I'll see you soon.